All right. We've I'm got allowed to say that as an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We've got Jacob in Lafayette. Uh, oh. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, I was just calling in. Um, all right. Well, like, y'all were talking about the uh, the priest that was that you know, like the priest scandal and how priest uh, the priest raped some kids or something and yes and how uh, he's you know it's unfair that. He gets to go to hell. I mean, gets to go to heaven for repenting, but atheists go to hell uh, for not believing. But, uh, I didn't say that. Well, that's the that's the religious idea. Is that is that uh, you know believers go to heaven if they confess their sins or they they you know give their life to God or whatever, and and non-believers, no matter how good they are, go to hell. Right. At least a lot of folks believe that. It's not necessarily universal. Right. But. All right. Well, like a like priests, they they dedicate their entire lives to like to saving people's souls. You know, I mean, if if you don't if you don't repent, then you're going to hell anyway. And I mean, that's much worse than like what you know uh, what happens in this world. So, like, so it's much worse for me to live a decent life and 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 be punished by some vindictive God who whose standards I didn't live up to than it is to be a pedophile, a rapist? Are you kidding well, me? Well, I mean, well, like I said, it's like that's what happens in this life. It doesn't even compare to eternity. So, you know? so what happens, you, you really, do you really live your life as if what happens in this life doesn't matter? I mean, what kind of world, what kind of cosmic joke would it be to find out the, the one and only life that we know we're going to have, that every minute that we've spent loving, laughing, you know, anguishing is all some cosmic joke, and that the real life starts afterwards. I mean, how is that well, any kind of? Well, it's not. A, it's not a joke. It's it's a it's a like a lesson. Like a. I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. If your worldview is such that you you think that a pedophile rapist that his actions are insignificant in comparison to some fantasy land of eternity. Um, your moral c compass has been completely skewed. Yeah, we don't we don't believe in souls. We don't believe in this afterlife. There's no evidence for this sort of thing. So, well, just, you know, well, just I, you don't get brownie believe points. It doesn't mean it isn't true. Right, and just because you keep asserting it doesn't mean it's true. So we're at a disagreement about whether or not it's true. What steps can we take to try to find out whether or not it's true? Do you care whether or not it's true? Well, well, yeah. Okay, so I mean, what? Well, how do we go about determining whether or not this is true? Because we're, we're at a disagreement about a fundamental fact about existence, right? And we care whether or not it's true. So what steps do we take to figure out whether or not it's true? Well, I mean, well, that, that's a different argument. That's, it's that's I mean, the question. Every, well, that, everything, everything that exists has to have a cause, right? What the hell does that have to do with it? Well, I, I'm at, you said you cared about whether or not this, this claim about a soul in an afterlife is true, right? And I do too. Now, if we both care about this, but we don't currently know whether or not it's true, there must be some way for us to go about determining if it's true, because if there's no way for us to find out whether or not it's true, then its truth is indistinguishable from its falseness. So I'm asking you, how would you go about finding out whether or not these claims are true? And you can't just begin with everything has to have a cause. That, what's that, that's got nothing to do with an afterlife or a soul. Well, well you have to begin somewhere. I mean, yeah, the, I'd like to begin by addressing the question. All right, well, like in the Bible it says that, that God created everything. And sure, and Captain Kirk asked God why he needed a spaceship. You can't go to the Bible and say what the Bible says, because then the next question is, why do you believe the Bible to be true? If your source of truth is the Bible, you've already lost. Well, but, well, the, you see, everything that exists has to have a cause, and, and everything does exist, so there has to be a cause. And, the, you know, the Bible says that God created the earth, and God created everything. Right, so, and other religions make other claims about it. So how do we go about finding out which one of those, if any, are true? Well, you just, I mean... That's where faith comes in. No, 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 no. Because if you care about whether or not something's true, faith has no place. Because your faith is indistinguishable from the faith of people who disagree with you. It's not a path to truth. Faith 
is accepting something. Faith is gullibility. Faith is the reason, the, the excuse people give for believing something when they don't have a good reason. I'm talking about how do we go about finding a good reason. And if your only answer is, to, well, the Bible says so, or, well, you just have to have faith, then you've demonstrated that you are not actually concerned about whether or not it's true. Well, of course, well, I mean, of course I'm concerned it's true. Then why, don't I mean, you, then why don't you take the steps that would reliably lead you to discern whether or not it's true? And what are those steps, why, man? Why, why are you giving up <laughs> and saying, oh, you just got to take it on faith? That's not a path to truth. I could take it on, I could take it on faith that, um, you know, I'm, after I die, I'm going to be spirited away by leprechauns to the tree in my backyard. I can take that on faith, and now that, that claim is exactly as viable as yours, if not more. There is a tree, after all. I have a tree. <laughs> I'm well, talking about paths to truth, and you're making appeals to faith, and that's not a path to truth. Faith is a, is a give up. It's the point at which you stop seeking truth and just say, you know, I can't figure out how to get any farther, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept this answer because it feels right or because I don't want to keep looking. It's not a path to truth. And it's the thing that I would encourage people to do is to actually go around and think about how you find out whether or not something's true in every other aspect. Because well, I guarantee you that you don't use faith for finding truth outside of your religious claims. Well, but if, you, if, if we were absolutely certain that God existed, then there would be no room for, for, for uh, having faith. Okay, first, it would be first, so what? First of all, <laughs> um, we don't need to be absolutely certain. Um, we can be reasonably certain. But second of all, Okay, so there's no room for faith. I'm fine with that. Why would anybody want to make room for faith? Why would you think faith is a good thing? Well, because if you don't have faith in something, how can you trust it? No, 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 no. You're, I, I, can, I can have trust in things, and I can have confidence in things based on evidence based on I have reasonable expectations about what's going to happen because there's a past record that has provided evidence for things. If I drop this pen, I don't have to have faith that it's going to fall down and hit the table. But, well, all right, we, well, we do have some reasonable evidence to believe that there's a God. What? That everything exists, and nothing can exist without a creator. No. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I, wow. I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but having gone over these arguments a lot of times, I'd recommend actually go over to wiki.ironchariots.org and look up arguments for the existence of God because we've got responses up there for the vast majority of these. And you cannot simply say that because everything exists, there must be a creator. There's, uh, I, depending on how well, you structure, first of all, it's not a logical argument, but depending on how you structure it into a, lo a logical argument, there could be any one of a dozen fallacies that get you from I exist, therefore God. And they're all flawed. If they weren't, well, it would be a Nobel frickin' prize. So we've looked well, at this. Well, then how do you explain how it exists if, if there is no creator? Then how do, how do things exist and how are things so complex? Um, first of all, complexity has absolutely nothing to do with it. And second of all, assume that we have no answer, right? Okay. Then the answer is, I don't know. The answer doesn't become, I can't think of anything better, therefore a god did it. That, but if we that have is a called holy the argument. That's, that is called that's the 4, argument. Years for, old. What's that? If we have a holy book that's 4,000 years old that says that there is a god who created things, no, then. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The age of your claims, neither the age of your claims, nor the number of people who believe them, nor the strength of their convictions has any bearing at all on whether or not those claims are likely to be true. And there are claims that are older than the book that you're pointing to, by the way, and you disregard those. Matter of fact, you disregard every other claim by every other religion, and you have absolutely no grounds for doing so. But you make no a special case for the religion that you believe, and you only want to justify it by appealing to faith. That's not somebody who's interested in whether or not something's true. Well, there's no, there are no claims that are as old as this one that say that there was one creator that created everything. Sure, it, it, sure. I, I, who cares? Why, why does it have to be a one creator? Why, why, why are you disregarding the other various creation claims? 
You're, you're making a whole bunch of assumptions that are all based on your preconceptions about your own religion. You are poisoning the well. You are looking at all the evidence and s tossing out anything that doesn't already fit with what you well, already believe. You're I'm not, not tossing out any evidence. Sorry, what? I'm not tossing out any evidence. What yes, you are. What am I tossing out? You are tossing out. Well, you're tossing out all of the other claims that don't match what you already believe, and you have like no base. Every other religion. But they don't talk about the creator. They just talk about gods that have always existed and that live in this realm. No, they don't. <laughs> you are grossly ignorant on what other religions claim, and you're also grossly ignorant on how to go about processing claims to figure out the true. And you keep you you've got what you believe, and now you're looking for anything that fits what you already believe. That's not a path to truth. You do not care whether or not it's true. And if you do, I'd, I'd recommend that you start at wiki.ironchariots.org and the arguments for the existence of God, and actually go out and get some books from some what other great thinkers have had to say on this subject. Because the kind of kindergarten simplistic, I exist, therefore God, uh, doesn't get anywhere. I mean, if do you really think you could live in a world where uh, where this wouldn't be like Nobel Prize and front page news and everybody knew it if there was a logical argument for the existence of God? Well, and, and, would, you, and would you have that, that and would you have for one second said you have to take it on faith if there was a valid and sound logical <laughs> argument for the existence of God? Of course not. And that's kind I'm, of conceding I'm the sorry, argument. Sorry, right? but that is the concession. As soon as you make the Bible says so or I'm taking it on faith you have lost and you've demonstrated that you're not in any way concerned about truth. And on that note, I got to go on to other callers, but thanks.